Six days before the solemn Passover, the Lord came to Jerusalem, and children waving branches ran out to welcome him. They loudly praised the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who come to us rich in love and mercy. Open wide the doors and gates, lift by the angel port, and the King of glory enters. Who is the King of glory? He is God, the Almighty Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Blessed are you who comes into the so rich in love and mercy. I bless these palms in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning to you all, Easter Sunday Mass. We don't have a fancy procession in a hermitage, but it comes from the heart, and that's what counts to the heart, the sacred heart of Jesus. So now I just respect that. Open wide the doors and gates. You're welcome, of course, before I open these doors and gates. You're all welcome here. We have sung that. And uh, you're welcome, no matter what part of the world you're in. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray for a closer union with Christ during the holy season. Almighty, ever-living God, you have given the human race, Jesus Christ our Saviour, as a model of humility. He fulfilled your will by becoming man and giving his life on the cross. Help us to bear witness to you by following his example of suffering and make us worthy to share in his resurrection. We ask this for Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the union of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever amen. And ever amen. The first reading is from Ezekiel. And uh, just see what we have here, friends of faithful. What do we have tomorrow? Uh, prayers of the faithful. We have them uh, later on. So now we're going to start off with the first reading. It's a reading from the prophet Isaiah, where it describes uh, someone putting up with a lot of suffering. Our tradition teaches us that these lines apply to Jesus and by gosh it's a lot of suffering if you look at my Facebook page and you get an image of what he went through it would be unbelievable the Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the wearied he provides me with speech each morning he wakes me to hear to listen like a disciple the Lord has opened my ear from my part I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who bore, tore at me, bared. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help, so that I am untouched by the insults. So too I set my face like flint. I know I should not be ashamed. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. 
Now, of course, as, as we've said before, read the second reading, we are uh, celebrating, we're celebrating between Holy Thursday and Easter Sunday the Passion, uh, Death and Resurrection of Jesus, you're all aware. And these events are also the focus of this and every Sunday celebration. We ask for God's help in undertaking a significant penitential rite as we begin. Let us remember the love God served with us as we call to mind our sins. Lord, we have sinned against you, Lord of mercy. Show us our mercy and love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. And may Almighty God of mercy and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Now we've had the opening prayer. As the Spirit guides me, and I do things sometimes different than they work out well, and sometimes may not, if I'm not interrupted. The psalm of this morning, the, the, I won't say I go with the organ, this is too much. Uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now that must have been terrible for uh, to have to see a man on that cross in such a position in Calvary. All who suffer me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him, if this is his friend, I said. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Many dogs surrounded me, a band of the wicked beset me, that tear that fear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They divide my clothing amongst them, they cast lots from my robe, O Lord. Do not leave me alone, my strength. Make haste to help me. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you there, they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise, all sons of Jacob. Give him glory, revere him. Israel's sons, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And of course in the second reading from uh, the letters in Paul to the Philippians, he humbled himself and God raised him high. He humiliated himself and God raised us high, we hear. Uh, it's an ancient hymn about Christ uh, which tells us that Jesus achieved glory through suffering. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God. But tempted himself, resumed the conditions of a slave, and become as men are. And being as all men are, he was humble yet. Even so, accepting death on a cross, but God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, see that all beings in the heavens and earth and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus and that every tongue shall acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. Glory be to God the Father. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Gospel acclamation. Praise to you, O Christ, eternal King of glory. Christ was humbler yet, even so accepting death, death on a cross. God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all names. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. And now the day We're going to have a reading from the Passion, and we'll sit down for this. So I'm doing it all myself, because a few lads here, but they don't want very camera shy. So we're not camera shy, come down, but I don't mind. Uh, either way, I serve, I don't question it. So what we said with the Passion, our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew, 
Glory to thee, O Lord. One of the twelve, the man came, uh, named, called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, Jesus, oh, those fingers are in front now. What did he say? What are you prepared to give me if I hand him over to you? Jesus asked. They paid him 30 pieces, silver pieces, and from the moment he looked for the, an opportunity to betray Jesus. Now on the first day of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus to say, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go to see and so, so and so in the city and say to him, the master says, my time is near. Is it at your house that I am keeping Passover with my disciples? The disciples did what Jesus told them and prepared the Passover. When the evening came, he was at table with the twelve apostles, disciples. And while we they were eating, he said, I tell you solemnly, one of you is about to betray me. They were greatly distressed and started asking in turn, Not I, Lord, surely, he answered, someone who has dipped his hand into the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man is going to be his fate, as the scripture says he will. But alas, for that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed, better for that man if he'd never been born. Judas Iscariot, who was to betray him, asked in his turn, Not I, Rabbi, surely. Jesus answered, There are your own words. Now as a written Jesus took some bread, and when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it and eat, this is my body. And then he took the cup, and when he had returned thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of you from this, for this is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. From now on, I tell you, I shall not drink wine until the day I drink the new wine with you in the kingdom of my Father. After the Psalms had been sung, they left for the Mount of Olives, and then Jesus said to them, You will all lose faith in me this night. But the scripture says, I shall strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after my resurrection, I shall go before you to Galilee. And at this, Peter says, or said, Though all lose faith in you, I will never lose faith. Jesus answered him, I tell you solemnly, this very night before the clock crows, you will have this only three times. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the disciples said the same. Then Jesus came with a small, with them a small estate called uh, Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Stay here while I go over to pray. He took Peter and uh, the two sons of Zebedee with him and sadness came over him and great distress. And then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful to the point of death. Wait here and keep awake with me. And going on a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by. Nevertheless, let it be as you, not I. I would have it. He came back to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, so you had not the strength to keep awake with me for one hour. You should be awake and pray not to be put to the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again a second time he went away and prayed, My father, if this cup cannot pass by without me drinking it, your will be done. And he came again back and found them sleeping. The rays were so heavy, leaving them there. He went away again and prayed for the third time, repeating the same words, 
Then he came back to the disciples and said to them, You can sleep on now and take a rest. Now the hour has come when the Son of Man has been betrayed into the hands of, of sinners. Get up, let us go. My betrayer is already close at hand. He was still speaking with Judas, one of the twelve appeared, and with him a large number of men armed with swords and clubs, sent by the chief priests and elders of the people. Now the traitor had arranged a sign with them. He had said, The one I kiss is the man, take him in charge. Oh, so he went straight up to Jesus. And uh, so he went straight up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus said to him, My friend, do what you are here for. And then they came forward, seized Jesus, and took him in charge. At that one of the followers of Jesus grasped his word and drew it. He struck out at the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. Jesus then said, Put your sword back, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot appear, appeal to my father who would promptly send more than 12 legions of angels in my defence? But then how would the scripture be fulfilled that say this is the way it must be? It was at the same time that Jesus said to the crowds, I am a brigand that you had to set out to capture me with swords and clubs. I sat teaching in the temple day after day and you never laid hands on me. Now all this happened to fulfill the prophecies in scripture. Then all the disciples and certain men ran away. The men who had arrested Jesus led him off to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter followed him at a distance and when he reached the high priest's palaces he went in and sat down with the attendants to see what the end would be. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus, <coughs> however false on which they <coughs> might pass the death sentence. <coughs> they could not find any, though several lame witnesses came forward eventually to step forward and made a statement. This man I have the power to destroy the temple, this man said, I have the power to destroy the temple of God in three days and build it up. The high priest then stood up and said to him, Have you no answer to that? What is the evidence these men are bringing against you? But Jesus was silent and the high priest said to him, I put you on, the, uh, on oath by the living God to tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus answered, The words are your own. Moreover, I tell you that from this time onwards you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the Father and coming on the clouds of heaven. At this the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. What need of witness have we now? There you have just heard the blasphemy. What's your opinion? They answered, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and hit him with their fists. Others said, as they struck him, Play the trump, play the prophet. Christ, who hit you then? Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. And the servant girl came up to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of them, all saying, I do not know who you're talking about. When he went out of the gateway, another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. And again, with a note, he denied it. I do not know this man. 
Little later the bystander came up and said to Peter, You are the one of whom of oh, them be sure. You are one of them be sure. Your servant, your accent gives you away. And then he started, he started calling down courses on himself and swearing, I do not know the man. At that moment the cock crew and Peter remembered what Jesus had said, before the cock crew you will have disowned me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. When morning came all the chief priests and the elders of the people met in council to bring about the death of Jesus. They had him bound and tied him away to hand him over to the pilot, the governor. When he found that Jesus was being condemned, Judas' betrayer was filled with remorse and looked for 30 pieces of silver back to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned, I betrayed innocent blood. They replied, What's that to us? That is your concern. And the flinging down the silver pieces in the sanctuary he made off and wept and hanged himself. The chief priest packed up the silver pieces and said, It is against the law to put into this the treasury. It is blood money. So they discussed the matter and brought the potter's field, bought the potter's field with it as a graveyard for foreigners. And this is why the field is called the field of blood today. The words of the prophet Jeremiah were then fulfilled and they took the 30 pieces, the sum of which, of this 30 pieces of silver, the sum of which the precious one was priced by children of Israel. And they gave them to the potter's field. They gave them for the potter's field just as the Lord directed me. Jesus then was brought before the governor and the governor put him into question, this question. In the king of the Jews, Jesus replied, and as you said, now when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he refused to answer at all. Pilate then said to him, do you not hear how many charges have been brought against you? But to the governor's uh, complete amazement, he offered no reply to any of the charges. At festival time, it was the governor's practice to release one prisoner for the people, anyone they chose. But there was at that time a notorious prisoner whose name was Barabbas. So when the crowd gathered, Pilate said to them, Which do you want me to release for you? Barabbas or Jesus, who was called Christ. For Pilate knew it was uh, out of jealousy that they had handed him over. Now as he was seated in the chair of judgment, his wife sent him a message, have nothing to do with that man. I have been upset all day by a dream I had about him. The chief priests and the elders Whoever had persuaded the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas and the execution of Jesus. So when the governor spoke and asked them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, When I do this with Jesus, what I am to do with Jesus? He said, what, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. Pilate asked, Why? What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, let him be crucified. Let pa then Pilate saw that he was making no impression, that in fact a riot was imminent. So he took some water, washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I'm innocent of this man's blood. At your concern, the people to a man shouted back. His blood be, you, be on us and on our children. And then he released Barabbas for them. He ordered Jesus to be first scourged and then handed over to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus with them into the Precatorium and collected the whole cohort round him. 
Then they stripped him and made him wear a scarlet cloak. And uh, having twisted some thorns into a crown, they put this on his head and placed a reed in his right hand. To make fun of him, they knelt to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spat on him. And he took the reed and they took the reed and they struck him on the head with it. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the cloak and dressed him in his own clothes and led him away to crucify him. On the way out, they came across a man from Saran, Simeon by name and enlisted him to carry this cross. When they reached the place called Golgotha, which is the place of the skull, they gave him wine to drink. When they had finished crucifying him, they shared out his clothing by casting lots and sat down and stayed there keeping guard over him. Above his head was placed the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. At the same time, two robbers were crucified with him. Uh, uh, one on the right and one on the left. The passers by jeered at him and they shouted, they shook their hands and said, So why, so you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days? Then save yourself if you were God's son. Come down from the cross. The chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him in the same way, saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. He's the king of the Jews. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He put his trust in God, now lets God rescue him if he wants him. For he did say, I am the son of God, even the robbers who were crucified with him taunted him in the same way. From the sixth hour, there was a darkness come over all the land until the, uh, the ninth hour. When about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out a loud voice, Ali, Ali, Lama, Sabatani. That is, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood there heard this, they said, the man is calling on Elijah. And one of them quickly ran out to get a sponge, which uh, he dipped in vinegar. And putting it in a reed, gave it to him to drink. The rest of them said, wait, see if Elijah will come to save him. But Jesus again cried out in a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. You can all kneel now for a moment. You're able. And that the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, the rocks were split, the tombs opened, and the bodies of many bodies, holy men, rose from the dead. And after that, these, after the resurrection, came out of the tombs, entered the holy city, and appeared to a number of people. Meanwhile, the centurion. Uh, together with the others guarding Jesus had seen the earthquake and all that was taken place and they were terrified and said in truth he was the son of God and many women who were watching from a distance the same women who had followed Jesus from Galilee and looked after him among them were Mary of Magdala Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of Zebedee's sons when it was evening there came a uh, rich man of Arimathea called Joseph who himself became a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate therefore ordered it to be handed over so Jesus took the body, wrapped it in a clean shroud. So Joseph took the body, wrapped Jesus in a clean shroud and put it in his new tomb which he had hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a large stone across the entrance of the tomb and went away. And Mary of Magdala and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the sepulchre. Next day, that is, the preparation day was over. 
the chief priests and the Pharisees went in uh, a body, went in a body to Pilate and said to him, Your Her Excellency, we recall that this impostor said, while he was still alive, after three days will rise again. Therefore give in order to have the sepulchre kept secure until the third day, for fear his disciples come and steal him away and tell the people he is risen from the dead. This last piece of fraud would be worse than what went before. Pilate said to them, You may have your guards go and make all secure as you know how. So they went and made a separate secure, putting seals on the stone and mounting a guard. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just pause now for a moment. Terrible. It was terrible. Move on. That was terrible. The dawn to Jesus. Terrible what they've done to Jesus. That's all they can say. Well, it's up to God now to judge those Jews, not me. Remember the Our Father, but forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not. Temptation. So now we're going to come to our prayers for the faithful. Brethren and sisters, let us pray to God who saves us. For all who take up the cross as followers of Christ, Lord hear us, Lord grace to hear us. For the courage never to be afraid to speak up for justice, Lord hear us, Lord grace to hear us. For people who feel tired and weary from the struggles of life, Lord hear us, Lord grace to hear us. For the sick and all who care, for them. Lord hear us. For those who suffer from depression and two people in Scotland have asked me to pray and they know who I mean. I pray for them when we begin to decay. Jesus, give them a healing through the Eucharist. I beg of you. And now for the dead, and especially for Tom Savage, whose funeral was on Sunday the 2nd. Tom was a very bright gentleman, a native of Cooley Peninsula, and he was ordained a priest in 1964, and uh, worked in the Department of Communications after doing a four-year degree at Queen's in social science. So now we pray for all Tom's family. Very nice family indeed, the savages. I knew the daddy well, more about it than the mammy, because the, the, the daddy was in this house working many years ago. He was a good man to build and very accurate. And uh, Tom, was, he was accurate in what he did on the radio. He was an advisor to uh, the minister, Albert Reynolds, Prime Minister of Ireland, or Taoiseach for two years but he was in power. So eternal rest grant to Tom and may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace to men. For all needs now we remember now in silence. Lord hear us, thy grace to hear us. God of our salvation, your love for the world has no end. Hear the prayers of your faithful people. Make true Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands have become the bread of life. Let's be God forever. May the mystery of the Lord and wine come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed be Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become a spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. How much burden the country heart. We accept you, O Lord, and may start for the day and the sight be pleasing to you. Wash me, Lord, from iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may accept with God the mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. Lord, with the suffering and death of Jesus, your only Son, <clears throat> make us pleasing to you. Alone we can do nothing. But may this perfect sacrifice win us your mercy and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eucharistic prayer number two. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, lift them up to the Lord, give thanks to the Lord of God. It is right and just. Father and powerful and ever living God, we do and always and ever to give you thanks to Jesus Christ the Lord. Though he was sinless, he suffered willingly for sinners. Though innocent, he accepted death to save the guilty. By his dying, he has destroyed our sins. By his rising, he has raised us to holiness of life. We praise you, Lord, with all the angels and saints in the song as we sing. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth is full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed sea comes in the name of Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Your holy need the fountain of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may be comforts the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave me thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which is given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the union and eternal covenant which bore out for you many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim our death, O Lord, and we come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis the Pope, Michael the Patriarch, me, your Bishop, and for all the bishops in charity. Remember your servant, Tom Savage, who was read, laid to rest on the, the 2nd of uh, April. Granted, Tom, who was united 
with your son in his death, like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. And of course, remember also our brothers and sisters of falling asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints of peace throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now let us pray with confidence the words the Saviour gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, the Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we be all free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of the Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace to leave you, my peace to give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of the church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. will he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. And of course, everyone on the internet, once again, enemies, friends, race, creed, anybody, peace be with you. And with your spirit. As the mingling of the body and blood bring eternal life to those who receive it. Lamb of God, you take with sins of the world of merciness. Lamb of God, you take with sins of the world of merciness. Lamb of God, you take with sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, if it were worthy that you should enter under the roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ keep me safe in eternal life. And you too will receive. Amen. Sweetheart of Jesus, fond of love and mercy, today we call thy blessing to implore. Oh, touch our hearts so cold and so unfaithful, and make them, Lord, thine own forevermore. Sweetheart of Jesus, we implore. Oh, make us love thee more and more. O oh, sacrament, most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine.
What has passed our lips with food, O Lord, but we possess in purity of heart that what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. O sacrament, most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. If this cup may not pass, but I must drink it, then yours will be done. Let us pray. Lord, O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and thanks given be every moment thine. Lord, you have satisfied our hunger with this Eucharistic food. The death of your Son gives us hope and strengthens our faith. May his resurrection give us perseverance and lead us to salvation. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. So now bow your heads for the solemn blessing and give her a ring here when we say Amen. The Father of mercies has given us an example of unselfish love in the suffering of his only Son to your service of God and neighbour. May you receive his countless blessings. Amen. You believe that by his dying Christ stride death forever. May he give you everlasting life. Amen. He humbled himself for our sakes. May you follow in his example and share in his resurrection. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace. Love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much, everybody. Hope you all have a very good weekend.